dimensional analysis or the factor label method is a method that we use when we need to convert measurements from one unit of measure to another and we do this through the use of what we refer to as conversion factors conversion factors take two equivalent measurements and relate them and usually express them in the form of a ratio or a fraction and then we use these conversion factors in a multiplication type problem for example we take two equivalent time quantities 60 seconds of time and one minute of time they they express and represent the same amount of time that is passing and so if we take that relationship 60 seconds versus one minute we can express that in ratio form either as 60 seconds over one minute or we could also express it as one minute over 60 seconds. Now if you think about what you know about fractions, anytime you have a quantity divided by itself, like if you have 4 divided by 4, that's equivalent to 1. If you have 25 divided by 25, or 25 over 25, that's equivalent to 1. It's the same thing over itself. Well, we have the same thing here. 60 seconds of time over 1 minute of time, that's equivalent to 1. 1 minute over 60 seconds, they are the same thing. So anything over itself is equivalent to 1. And if you think about it, we can express 1 as 1 over 1. Again, same thing over itself. And you can flip this conversion factor, or you can flip this fraction, and it represents the same exact thing. So what that means is that these two conversion factors, we can pick and choose which one we use based on the problem that we need to solve. Do we need to solve for seconds or do we need to solve for minutes? So let's take an example and, and use this and use this idea of equivalent values and conversion factors to help us solve a conversion type problem. We'll take a, a simple relationship that everybody should be familiar with. Um, how many eggs are in 2.5 or 2.5 dozen? Well, the units of measure here are your individual eggs and does it. And so our equivalent values would be that we have 12 eggs equal to one dozen. Okay. Now our conversion factors, we're going to have a choice of either using 12 eggs over one dozen or we could use one dozen over 12 eggs. Okay, each one of these is a valid conversion factor. And when I multiply that all out, I'm going to first multiply all my numerators together. So 1.7 times 5,280 times 12, and that would give me 107,712. And then I'm going to multiply my denominators. It's easy in this case, 1 times 1 times 1. It's not necessarily always going to be that way, but in this case it comes out very simply. And so if I simplify that, then my answer would be, um, and if we just round it off here, we're going to have uh, 110,000 inches. Okay. And exactly how much we round uh, will be influenced uh, or determined by something we refer to as significant figures. Uh, and we'll get into that uh, in a different lesson. But for right now, as long as you got, uh, if you were working this problem out, got something uh, close to this or you got the 107,712, uh, you're on the right track. Okay, so now let's, let's take all that we've learned here and apply it to this problem. How many weeks would there be in 2.1 million seconds? Seems like kind of an odd uh, thing to ask, but you know, again, we're looking at the process here. How do we convert a value expressed in one unit uh, to another unit? Okay, so the first thing we want to do um, is to map out how are we going to get from seconds to weeks? Because again, that's not a real familiar um, 
quantity or conversion that most people work with. So if we plot it out, we know how many seconds we have. So we're going to start in seconds. Now, in terms of time units, most people are familiar with how many seconds are in a minute. So we'll go to that unit next. From minutes, still minutes to weeks isn't real familiar, but minutes to hours is pretty familiar. And then, more than likely, hours to days. And then, finally, from days to weeks. So you can see, you know, now we're looking at a problem which is going to probably have one, two, three, four conversion factors. All right, and, and it doesn't make it any more difficult. All it does is it just lengthens the problem, it gives you more terms that you're multiplying in the end. All right, that's, that's all the more difficult it makes it. So let's take what we're given, 2.1 million seconds. Now, you have your choice as to how you're going to write that out. You can write that out as you know, 2, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 with the commas, or you can write it out in scientific notation form. That's what I'm going to opt for just for space sake. So that's going to be equivalent to, get my decimal in there, 2.1 times 10 to the 6th seconds. And I'm going to put that over 1. Now, in the previous examples, we, we explicitly wrote out what our equivalent values were, what our conversion factors are. Once you get comfortable with the process, you don't have to specifically write those out separately before you put them in the problem. If you know that your first step is going to be seconds to minutes, and you know you want to get away from seconds, you know that the seconds has to be in the denominator. So you can set the units up first. And so seconds to minutes, minutes is going to be up top. Now, this is where you got to keep straight, you know, what's the relationship between minutes and seconds? In every one minute, there are 60 seconds. Okay, so the one is going to go with the minutes, and the 60 would go with the seconds. Okay, little tip here, uh, the larger, whichever unit of measure is the larger one, is typically going to be given the value one, and then you define how many of the smaller unit there are in that one. Okay, so we have one minute over 60 seconds so that the seconds can factor out. Now we're on the next step, so minutes to hours. So now we're going to, again, we want to get away from minutes, so we're going to put minutes on the bottom and the hour on the top. For every one hour, there are 60 minutes, so the minutes factor out. And now we're on to hours to days. We know that in one day there are 24 hours. We're going to want the 24 hours to go on the bottom so that we can factor out hours. Leaves us with days. And then finally, to get the weeks, we know that there are seven days in a week. We want the days to go away, so we put seven days on the bottom, one week on the top. And now that we've gotten to a point where we are in the units that we are asked for, now we can do the math. So again, we start with the numerator. And this one's pretty simple. So that 2.1 million times 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 is going to give us 2,100,000. And then you're going to have the 1 times 60 times 60 times 24 times 7. Which is going to give us 604,800. And when I then divide those two terms, and again I'm going to do some rounding here, just to report two digits here. Um, that would come out to 3.5 weeks. It actually comes out to uh, 3.472 and some change. Um, but again, we'll talk about how to determine the extent to which you should round. Uh, but in this case, as long as you computed this and came out with about 3.5 weeks, then you've got the process down.